In this screencast, I'm going to review the directional terms that you'll need to know throughout the whole semester. The first two I'm going to talk about are going to be medial and lateral. Remember, the medial part is the part that is closest to the midline, and this is the midline. The lateral part is the part that's farthest from the midline. So for example, your nose is blank to your ear. Your nose would be medial to your ear because the nose is closer to the midline. Just as the ear would be lateral to the nose because it's farther from the midline than the nose is. Another example I shared with you is in the knee. Remember there's a medial ligament and a lateral ligament. The medial ligament is going to be closer to the midline. The lateral ligament is going to be farther from the midline. The next two we're going to look at is superior and inferior. The superior part is the part that's closer to the head. The inferior part is going to be farther from the head. And remember we use superior and inferior when we're talking about the head and torso. So the nose is going to be blank to the belly button. The nose is going to be the superior part because it's closer to the head. The belly button is going to be inferior to the nose because it's farther from the head. Also remember if I did the nose in the mouth, the nose would be superior to the mouth because it's higher up. Now remember, again, that's, those are the terms we use when we're talking about the head and the torso. When we're talking about the appendages, the arms and the legs, we use the terms proximal and distal. The proximal part is the part that is closest to the attachment of that appendage. So the shoulder for the arm, the hip for the leg. So your elbow would be blank to your wrist. Your elbow would be proximal because the elbow is closer to the attachment. The wrist would be distal because it's farther than the elbow from the attachment. Down at your legs, if we looked at your ankle and your knee, compared to your knee, your ankle is distal. It's farther from the attachment point than the knee, which is proximal. So make sure you understand you use superior and inferior on the head and torso. If you're given two parts that are on the head and torso, you use superior and inferior. And you use proximal and distal if you're given two parts on the arms or the legs. The next set of terms we're going to look at are anterior and posterior. The anterior part is the part that is closer to the front, and the posterior part is the part that is closer to the back. I gave you an example in the knee. There's an anterior cruciate ligament, and there's a posterior cruciate ligament. The anterior cruciate is towards the front, posterior towards the back. Your nose is blank to your spinal cord. Your nose would be anterior, your spinal cord would be posterior. So again, anterior and posterior, front and back. The next set of terms is superficial and deep. Superficial is going to be closer to the surface. Deep is going to be deeper than the superficial part. So an example is, it goes your skin, your fat, and your muscle. So what would your skin be compared to muscle? The skin would be superficial to your muscle. The muscle would be deep to the skin. You'll see us use those terms a lot, superficial and deep, when we get to the muscles. If one muscle's on top of the other one, the one on top is considered superficial, and the one on the bottom is considered deep. The last set of terms are what's called contralateral and ipsilateral. Ipsilateral, remember, has two eyes, which means the two parts are on the same side. So if I made the comment, the right leg, the right leg and the right arm are blank, you would say they are ipsilateral. They are on the same side. If I said the left arm and the right leg are blank, your answer would be they are contralateral. They are on opposite sides. So when you see me, or in other situations, use two right sides or a right and a left, the terms you should be using are ipsilateral if they're on the same side and contralateral if they are on opposite sides. So again, this is just a review of your basic terms in terms of directional terms. 
You need to make sure you understand this because it will be on every one of your tests as we go through the different systems. We will use the terms. One other thing I want to remind you of is that you need to make sure you know that you're in the anatomical position. Okay, anatomical position with the uh, front of the hands facing anterior, facing towards the front. Now this will come into play not as much with proximal and distal, but with medial and lateral. When you look at it in the anatomical position, you'll see here the pinkies are medial and the thumbs are lateral. So you have to remember you're in the anatomical position when you're doing or using this terminology. And again, that only really affects the arms and it only really affects when you're using medial and lateral. Proximal and distal it won't make any difference. So I hope this helps. Go back and review it again because again you're going to see several questions on the first test and every test after that within lab. So it's something you need to make sure that you understand. If you have any other questions just feel free to ask or talk to your friends in the lab and see if they can help you.